Once upon a time, I left my fears behind. It's not enough to rise above. I felt it, I wanted more. I sacrificed, put my life on the line. I didn't give up no matter what. I chased it, I wanted war. Clevedon plays host to event number five on the tour. The Somerset countryside provides the backdrop for this stunning course that will prove a true test. It's also the home turf of Johnny Morgan. So now, following on from a disruptive Montrose, the sun is out and shining on John and Kit Alexander. What a wonderful day we've got here at Clevedon Golf Club. I'm joined by the wizard of the West Country, John E. Morgan. Now, before we talk about this place, and I know you've got a lot to say about yep. it. First of all, last week, Chris Gain, a man you know very well winning mm. at Montrose. What did you make of that performance? Well, the dancer done well. And I tell you what, he was singing an old dancer when he came off and he got the news that we weren't going to the final day and he's able to pick up the trophy. But of course, it was in great nick. It was a shame not to see final day, obviously. But it was Bonard out there. I mean, it was really windy. It was going to be a massive test for the players but the ball just running on the greens but it was nonetheless Montrose always brings a great tournament to the Euro Pro. Absolutely and to bring our focus to the here and mm. now Clevedon your home club you know every inch of this piece mm. of land what kind of a test does it pose to the players? Well some of they're not used to really I mean we, we, we go to you know you see the venues we go to and we go to big long strong golf courses you know this one isn't that this one's just over 6,500 yards long it's a par 72 you know I mean that's a big par for a short golf course mm -hmm. you know and they are able to take advantage of your, your second and your 12th which are quite short par fives and they're really dominating those holes but the other holes that are in the mix the par fours the short par fours are really quirky and that's what this golf course is all about you've got ferries the one that we're still on here 18 it says it all really the slope of the ferry and that's what the boys got to deal with they got to bend their shots into the ferry hit the high side try and hold the ferry to get a nice lie to approach their second shots into the greens and if they're in the rough it's going to be really hard for the boys to control their balls and then you know obviously the windy condition with the bristol channel being there that's causing havoc mm -hmm. and well here for final day my goodness i mean it's hardly a breath of wind so they might go low kit it's a packed leaderboard john so who do you fancy to make a run for the trophy today Oh, well, I tell you what, I'm going for Jackson. Mm -hmm. I know Ryan Campbell, you know, was 10 under yesterday, made double at the last. But Jackson, to me, you know, pro-am day, came here, never seen a golf course shot six under, bang, right? He's up there again, he's at eight under par, mm -hmm. he's in that leading pack. So, you know, the man obviously likes the golf course. I'm not going to write off Ryan Campbell, but I think Luke, I think he's got the edge. Awesome insight as always, John. Let's see what we've got coming up on the show. We take the chance to catch up with ex-European Tour Pro, Van Phillips. If they can win here, that they can make it. And I think some of them don't quite believe that. Kit will be out on the course. If you leave it too short, you face a really tricky long two-putt up that green. John Morgan will give his own unique take on a course he regards as home. That's going to be a tap in four, and that might be enough to win this tournament. Cleveland Golf Club, be proud. And the best of the action from the final round of the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship. Plenty of players have already laid down a marker in the opening two rounds, leaving a leaderboard dominated by three men on eight under. Ryan Campbell, who matched the course record with a 65 on day one. Brendan McCarroll, who proved the model of consistency with two rounds of 68. And Luke Jackson, who made his mark with a 66 in round two. But the man of the moment is Italian Rocco San Giust, who's carded five birdies through the first 11 holes and now joins that trio at the top of the leaderboard. And delighted to be joined today by Gary Ellis and the local hero, Johnny e. Morgan. Oh, less, of the, less of the hero stuff, but I am local. And here's Mr. Young on the first hole, playing with a local boy, Ashley Mansell. 
This is his second shot. Looking down on the green here at the first hole. Three tier green from right to left. Oh, that's got some chubby checkers. That catches a slope. That's forever going to get closer. And oh, I tell you what, one inch more. That's nearly a gimme. Bob Anderson there, John, wasn't it? That yeah. dance player behind walking down that first hole. Yeah, he's been a member for years. Gary loves it as we see Joe Dean here hitting out of the trees. Oh, and that one having a hard bounce, and over the back she goes at the second. And that was his second shot to this par five. Brave approach, that one. Yeah, playing a little bit downwind today. Wind switch round, it's sort of coming down the estuary. Wow, fantastic start. He's only the third player to start with a birdie all day and immediately reduces his deficit to two. This is your eagle effort. Back right of the second. Chivin should just break off the right-hand side, hitting the collar, feeding down. That'd be a nice little tap in birdie. Eagled this hole yesterday, not too far away from doing it again today. And the first here is the longest par four on the course. Yes, and indeed playing a little longer into the breeze today as we watch McCarroll from the left rough. That's a great shot there, just feeding on down. Able to use the tiers today with the pin set on the left side there. The players could work one in very close. Yes, they could indeed, Gary. I mean, they need all the help they can get on that first green there. It's not easy. Now, young monster drive. Playing with a local boy, I mean, he's caught the fast lane. He's in, it looks like he's got an eight iron in his hand. Trying to swing it in from right to left. And no, that just shows you he's able to get the spin with that second shot. There's a ball up there nice and close. I think that's Ashley, the local boy. Now, as we've said, there are four players currently tied for the lead on eight under, and they're all looking for their first ever win on this tour today, including this man, Jackson. Looks in good form this week, Luke Jackson. Playing very nicely. There you see, John, just caught on that second tier. That's slightly awkward putt now coming down to judge the pace of this. Yeah, he's going to have to ride the edge of that and then just he'll feed down towards the pin for his putt. As we find Joe Dean playing his third shot on the fourth hole. He drove behind the trees, had to chip out. But that's a pretty good shot. A little bit unlucky. It's actually dug in for once there, right on the edge. Uh, very quickly in his round, Young has this to jump into a share of the lead. Yeah, pretty in that first hole is... Of a birdie. Let's try the word go. This one tracking, coming in from right to left, just fades away. And that is no more than a foot, foot and a bit from the hole. That'd be a tapping birdie, I'd imagine. Back to Jackson, whose 66 was actually the best score of the second round yesterday. He's done well. Come on. Oh. Judged that nicely, didn't he? Cool. Oh, That's did a he? cracker, John. That was a beauty, Gary. Yeah, not easy, this green. Very big, probably one of the biggest putting services on the golf course as well, the first. Quite generous, very lengthy number to start the boys off with, as we see Young here for his birdie. Yeah, taps that one in. Birdie, birdie start. We actually saw Niall Carney a little earlier go even better. Birdie eagle start for him today. As we look at Brendan McCarroll. Just running it along the edge of the ridge, just a few inches left. Oh, oh come on! Dear. It surely gravity must. It must. It must. It I is. Don't think I mean, it's going to. The slope is off there. I mean, come on, wait your ten seconds. I think he's done it. Oh, that's unlucky. That. Oh. He's in his Sunday colours though. He's ready to go. Looks like he means business. As we see Dean for his birdie. Yes, his fourth hole, again downwind, slightly downhill, playing very short, so even though he visited the trees, is this a four, a very nice birdie. How good <laughs> is that, guys? I mean, drives it in the trees, yeah, happy days. Two birdies in the first four for him. Meanwhile, Rocco Sanjust has picked up a birdie on 12 to go to nine under, so he's now one clear of Campbell, McCarroll and Jackson, who've all powered the first. And look at the local man, Ashley Mansell, an eagle on the second, getting him into that group on seven under. Earlier, John Morgan caught up with an old friend, ex-European tour player, Van Phillips. I want to reflect on a few old things, mate. 1999, there's a few grey hairs between us. You had a win on the European tour. 
I did, long time ago now, but I remember it like it was yesterday, John. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Go on then, reminisce. Come on, reminisce. What was that like? And what was the standard like? I mean, you're here at the Europe Pro. Yeah. What's the kind of differences? I think the standard now on, on all the mini tours is incredible. You know, the, yeah. de the depth as well, the cuts are tough to make. And if you basically don't go out and shoot seven or eight under first day, you're out of it. So that's how tough really? it is. Yeah, you feel like you need to shoot five under or lower every day if you can have any chance. I mean, with the players now coming through, their aspirations to be in, in your position back in 99, sure. win a European Tour event, what have they got to go through? What's the feelings like when you win that European Tour event? I think for me, you know, obviously I speak to a lot of the guys, yeah. and the one thing that strikes me that might be holding some of them back is more there the mental application. So, you know, I've oh, asked yeah, a fair play, yeah. Yeah, you know, I ask a few of the guys, where are you going to, to European Tour School at the yeah. end of the year? And some of them say, oh, I'm not going to go this year, you know, which to me, sort of sends alarm bells off because, you know, certainly when I was in my early 20s, there was nothing stopping me no. going there. So I think if they just change their outlook a little bit and have the confidence to think if they can win here, that they can make it. And I think some of them don't quite believe that. Well, you've had some good scalps as well. I mean, Mauritius, beat Philip Price, was that 2006? Yeah, 2006, so not as long ago. It doesn't make me feel so old, that one. <laughs> Um, yeah, came back in seven under that day, John, on the back nine Did to you? win by one, yeah. And what are you thinking of the golf course? This is my home. It's very tricky, and I can see where that unbelievable skill came from, John. You, oh, know, yeah, you have right, to hit yeah. incredible shots around here. Well, mate, I'm hoping to see a lot more yeah. of the same, Van. Thank so you. get your A game yeah. on, my Thanks friend. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you very lot. much Thank for you. joining us. Thanks a lot. Yeah, didn't quite bring his A game this week. Rounds of 78 and 71 to miss the cut. Didn't he used to play in a tie, John? He did. He looked very dapper, Michael. i tell you what, younger here. On the tee, yeah, Van just, well, unfortunately for him, just bad back. He's had to change his swing, as we see. Younger towering a shot, down pin eye, right at this flag. And I tell you what, that's going to be another birdie chance. Top shot there. At the shortest hole on the course. Now, this is Owen Edwards, Welshman, in his first season on this tour. 67 and 71 so far for him. This is an interesting shot, John. He's under the trees. There's a, quite a climb, as you know, up this second hole to chase that up over the little path. That's a very, very fine shot. It is, and that's a brave number. We've got a couple of lefties out on our tour at the moment, which is quite nice, and he had to fade that one, low punchy one up onto just shy of the green on the right hand side. As we see Mark now, this one's just going to break on the right edge, and he's got it. And there's the hat trick of birdies. What a start this is. Very sort of calm demeanour, do you not think? There, he's he is. very cool and collected. Yeah, it looks very confident, I'll give you that. We saw Edward second, this is where he chipped his third two, and this is for Birdie to get within two of the lead. The greens are running absolutely pure, guys, they really are. Yeah, they've done a great job here, because it's a small ground staff, and uh, I think they've worked wonders here as we watch Ryan Campbell going for a big high towering shot there. Get it up on this green. Oh, that is, that's, come on, guys, and that's going to hold. That was a lovely shot. And yeah, he must have thought he'd can that, I would think. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he did. He had a horrible finish yesterday. He actually started at the 11th, so the 10th was his closing hole, and he took a double bogey six on it. But he's opened up with a par today as we go back to Young. Yeah, well, he's hit his drive down the right-hand side. That kind of opens up the gap to where you can see the flag. Got to bend it from right to left, and he's done well here, getting it to the front right-hand side, and, oh, he's going to fancy that. Mike Bedford started the day two back, and he's opened up with two pars today. Quite a drop down from this third tee to the green. You can see it all. It looks lovely, but uh, it's a small target. Very easy to let the ball drift off a bit right, but here we are, another cracking shot. Yeah, that wind's staying pretty dormant for the players. If you see Young here putting through the fringe, it's going to affect the putt a little bit. Big crowds will be following this one. He's playing with a little local hero, Ashley Mansell. This one tracking. A little bit of work to be done to get to his fourth birdie in a row. Not a bad start, is it? Back to the second. Ryan Campbell just chipping it over the fringe. Oh, he's giving it a little bump with a putt. Yeah, it's a good, good choice, that. It's by far easier. The ball is round. It will roll. <laughs> <laughs> it sure will. That was to leapfrog San Just and go into the lead, but should have no problems here joining them on nine under. Mark Young to polish off 
Well, what would be four birdies in a row? What a dream start. And look at that. All systems go. And off to the fifth he goes. Par three coming up. So now three of them tied at nine under. And this man, one behind. Into the fairway, just as you could see there, just keeping his way on the back foot, make sure he gets plenty of elevation. Firing them in today, aren't they? They are indeed. I mean, this golf course really gives it up to you if the wind stays dormant. Very rare is it staying dormant, but uh, they struggled the first two days. Now they should be going crazy on the greens. Bedford's birdie at the third is a big improvement. He bogeyed it in both previous rounds. With everyone else making birdies all over the place, he needed that. Yeah, McCarl in his Sunday colours. We've seen him at Studley Wood, dressed exactly the same. Bit of that Tiger vibe going on. Uh, yeah, misread there. Yeah, high, wide and not very handsome. But he still has this to join that group at nine under. Nice two-put birdie from McCarroll. So oh, it's certainly congested at the top four players now. San Just is coming towards the end of his round, as well as Young, Campbell and McCarroll, all in the very early stages, all on nine under. John Ross Galbraith giving another good showing. He's on eight under, along with Luke Jackson. Now this week, the tour is setting out to support the Jesse May charity. Julian Withers explains what they're all about. Jesse May is a children's hospice at home charity. Uh, we've been running now for 22 years um, and it has all started out of the need of one family needing to care for their little girl, Jessica May, uh, at home. And uh, she sadly only had a very, very short life, but from that life, you know, has grown to be this wonderful organisation that helps, uh, you know, now 180 children and families throughout the, uh, throughout the Bristol, Bath and Wiltshire area. And how important for you is the tie-in uh, and combination with Matchroom Sport, World Snooker and the Euro Pro Tour? It's been, do you know what, it's actually been vital to us because we've been so acutely aware of the growth and demand for, for children. We've always worked to a policy where we've never run a waiting list. The support that they've given us is absolutely amazing because what it's meant is we've been able to grow our organisation, grow the number of nurses, but also keep the quality of care and that's been, that's been key for us. So it's keeping that quality of care going uh, throughout, throughout, but being able to accept more children as we go. Laudable ambitions from the Jesse May charity, fully supported by the tour. It's the final day here at Clevedon. More to come after the break. Welcome back to the final round of the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship at Clevedon in Somerset, where it's all very tightly bunched. So many players in contention in the relatively early stages of this battle for the fifth title of the Euro Pro Tour season. Rocco Sanjust has had a birdie two at the 14th to go to 10 under and re-establish the outright lead. Mark Young, Ryan Campbell and Brendan McCarroll all won back. And look at Richard James, the Welshman we saw winning on tour a couple of years ago. He's made it to eight under with four to go. John's been out to the eighth. Well, this is the signature hole, the eighth, 348 yards. And you can tell it why. I mean, pretty as a picture. Don't get any better views than that. And this baby, par four, very daunting tee shot, nine times out of 10, the wind straight into your face off that River Severn, Bristol Channel there, beautiful view in the distance. You, what's vital here, really, for the tee shot is picking a little pinprick dot in the distance and just focusing your eyes on it because you can't really see the fairway from back here it's all kind of disappeared on you plays about 45 down as well so it's some serious drop now it's all about trying to keep it nice and low and in play you can hug it up the right hand side and it will feed down to the fairway on the left now this is kind of at the back of the stance three wood little drill Green's over there on the right-hand side. Can't have a go at it. It's too far away with that wind as well. So this one's just a little gentle one under the wind. And I tell you what, couldn't play that any better. That is absolutely mint. That is run down there on the right-hand side. That's going to camber all the way down to the left-hand side to a nice flat lie. And I tell you what, you hit up to a lovely little raised green for your second. It's a quality hole, this eighth. Castle on the right-hand side, view to die for. Cleveland Golf Club, well done. 
John, I think you've played that hole a few times since you cycled up from school on your BMX bike when you were about nine years old. <laughs> Where do you get that info from, Gaz? Yeah, I used to. Mrs. Morgan and Mal Morgan used to give me, well, Mrs. Moore used to give me lifts up there. She was my economics teacher. And Mark there coming out of the thick stuff onto the green. As we go back to have a look at Edwards. Yeah, he dropped a shot at the third, but he can get it back here with interest. Good effort, Michael. Just slip past. And this is our first look at this Italian player out in 33. He's had four more birdies since then, having just made that two on 14. Is it a great drive? This is the hardest hole on the golf course, 15. Beautiful long par four up the hill. That's a great second shot. Good looking swing, nice balance. Nice young man, isn't he? He is indeed very enthusiastic, loving life. Let's go out to Kit on 15. Sanjust has hit a lovely approach in here to about 20 feet on the 15th. And importantly, he's left himself below the hole. It's uphill. He can be aggressive with it. It is going to break from left to right, but he gave it a big fist pump when his putt went in on the previous hole. He's feeling this and he's going to want another birdie. Well, the Italians always play with great emotion, don't they? We all remember Costantino Rockets and Andrews in 95. Yeah, punch in the ground when that big putt went out. Yeah, went in through the Valley of Sin. Let's track in. Oh, a whisker left. Well, that now means that Young's birdie put on the eighth is to go into a share of the lead with San Just. And here it is. Yeah, it just needs to keep this just above the edge of the hole. Keep up, keep up. Yes, look at that. Ready as soon as it came off the putter. Tracking all the way. Well mm -hmm. done, Mark. Yeah, that was a cracking putt there, Gary. Nowhere else. Straight in the heart of the hole. As we see McCarroll now at the fourth. This is second shot. Great drive. Not going in with much. This one must have bounded down the hill. Coming over the corner of the trees to the green. That's tucked on the left. Oh, I tell you what, he's reached easily in two. Make a mincemeat of this. Right. Rocco, great yeah. playing so far. Thank Seven you. under for the round. Yeah. What's been the key to that performance so far? Um, I've saved a couple good pars on the first few holes. Made a, good made a couple good putts for par. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I start playing very well. Um, I hit it very close on uh, uh, eight, nine... 10, 11, uh, on 12, I, I had a really good eagle putt that just stayed on the lip mm -hmm. and uh, made a good, paw, uh, good birdie on that uh, downhill par three, so I'm happy. Yeah, he plays mostly on the MENA tour, that's Middle East and North Africa, similar sort of level to this. And here he is, again, nicely from the middle of the fairway, pitching one up and over the water that guards the front of this green. Not bad, just a slight misjudgment in the distance, but still another uphill putt for another birdie. Yeah, not easy on that 16th with the big ridge there. As we see McCarroll now, long, lengthy eagle effort. This will put a spring in your step. And this Track would, in. I would have seen him leapfrog Sanjust and Young, but as it is, should be a two put birdie and a share of the lead. Now, as you say, John, from the edge of the green, coming up over this, there's a big step, big sort of old-fashioned Mackenzie-type green here with the two tiers in it. Judged it pretty well. He did. That wasn't easy. Uphill from start to finish, not easy to get the, the right pace, as we see Jackson here. This for birdie to get the nine under. And a little soft read off of... McCarroll on this track in, catches the right side and goes in. Top putt. He loves this hole. He's played it in four under over the three rounds. Wow. Sand just. This one, just under three feet. Yep. No bother at all. And avoids what would have been his first dropped shot. This should be a formality. Tapping in for birdie. 
Yeah, Young has birdied the ninth, so that was to get back within one. And with a par on 10, Mark Young stays at 11 under, one ahead of Sanjust, who's only got two to go, and Brendan McCarroll. And a big group on nine under as well, still hoping to have a say in the outcome of this. No, Carney's still going well, six under for the day as he plays the last. There you are at the par three, the fifth up the hill, won't be able to see the bottom of the flag. Bunkers left and right. Requires a good straight hit, this fifth. There's, there's no other way of playing it, really. Take dead aim and fire it like that. Oh, what a beauty. Right on the number. Longest of the par threes on the course. Back to Young now. He was out in 30. As I say, he's par 10. Yeah, spot a bother off the tee. He's been able to chip it out to here. This is third now from the left side. Oh, and he might get away with a par. Top shot. Jackson here coming off a birdie on four. Can he do similar to his playing partner? Looks lovely against that blue sky. Well, he's used Ooh. the contours and almost got it in there. It was amazing. That was great. That Whoa. just hit the left-hand side of the hole, I feel. That was a great six-iron there by Luke. So Dave Coupland just about remains the only man to have made a hole-in-one on the Euro Pro this season. He was almost matched there. As we have a look at Mark Young to save his par, and really that was never, as you could see, on the right line. Shot gone. Yeah, it is. I mean, he looked like he was aiming too far left there. That was like an inside left putt. Hit it firm, it'll always hold its line. But this is just a tap-in now for his, well, first bogey, I feel. Yeah, and Young's first drop shot of the day means McCarroll has a putt to go into the outright lead at 11 under par. Yeah, there's a little bit of movement off the left-hand side. Left lip putt this one, slightly down the slope, tracking. Oh, and that's a top two. Have a look at Jackson. Nice to see so many people out, John, on the course. You've obviously out here to support you and everything. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm very lucky, Gary. I must admit, a lot of people to thank as we see Jackson there make a nice two as well, following his playing partner. So McCarroll, as we've just seen, going to 11 under. But so many players, just one behind, so it's all still very tightly bunched as we go back to the leader. Oh, down on the dip. On the sixth, on the left-hand side. I think he'd had a bit of trouble here, actually. He's uh, he tweaked one up against the out-of-bounds fence there. So Did that's he? actually his third shot into there. Wow. Well, I tell you what, it might get away with the pars. We've seen digging deep out of the, the furry stuff down the left. That back left pin, not easy to get to. Luke Jackson was runner-up at Frilford Heath two years ago. It's still his best result on the Euro Pro. Ambitions of improving on that today. Well, he's staring this one down. Oh, and it's coming up just shy and left. That's going to be an awkward one. Got a good action, hasn't he, John? Don't you think? He takes it away swing. beautiful, doesn't yeah. he, Gary? Yeah, club looks good at the top. Goes up and down, no funny bends and kinks and loops in a swing like that. No. <laughs> well, we see Bedford here. This is going to be a common place for the boys down the left hand side of this eighth. Really gathering point. If you slightly pull it, then you come to a raised green. And that's a beautiful shot. He's not going to be able to see where that's finished, but he's going to have a nice smile on his face when he gets up on there. Well, this would be to complete a great up and down from McCarroll. He's had three birdies in the first five. Doesn't want to lose that momentum. There goes his first shot of the day. Yeah, it's an awkward tee shot there because you can hit the fairway and it kicks towards the out of bounds, and that's exactly what happened to him. Yeah, you can be brave at driver and try and take it down there, but nice long iron, complete to slightly right of the post, which you can see as we see Bedford there tapping in for a beautiful birdie at the eighth. Now Jackson to save his par, a bit of work to be done. Just inside right, firm, do the trick. Well, he went for right edge. 
represents Lindrick Golf Club, a place with uh, special associations for your family, Gary. Yeah, uh, Lindrick was uh, Ryder Cup 1957 that father was in, and one of the few, relatively few, Great Britain and Ireland winning teams before it became the European team. Well, that was the last time they won it before it became Europe. Americans weren't beaten again for 28 years. So we're back into a four-way tie for the lead now. Sanjos, the Italian, along with the Englishman, Dean and Young, and Ireland's Brendan McCarroll, all on 10 under. But look at that, four players also on nine under, and all still with plenty of time to make up that ground. As Clevedon makes its debut on the Euro Pro Tour, there's plenty for Chairman David Fife to celebrate after months of preparation. Yeah, of course it's been a lot of hard work. I mean, these yeah. things don't just happen, do they? No. I mean, we've been meeting for three or four months. We've been putting it together. We've had a great team. There's a guy, Dave Shields, who's been here from seven in the morning, probably six in the morning, as far as I know, <laughs> yeah. till it's finished, organising the spotters and the recorders and making sure everybody gets out there. And it's been, it's been a team effort and it's done really well. Personally, I think this has been a great advert for Cleveland Golf Club. I think we're really excited by the whole promotional thing we've been able to do and it's been, it's, it's been great. We've been really, really pleased to have you here and we hope to do it again. The Cleveton course delivering us a thrilling tournament which is still finely balanced. More to come after the break. So many players in contention for the title here at the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship hosted by Cleveton with eight men all covered by just a single shot and a lot of action still to come in this final round. It's Sanjust, Dean, Young and McCarroll on 10 under. Ashton Turner's just had his fifth birdie of the day on 12 to move into the group on 9 under. And look at Dave Coupland there, the man we saw going so close at Studley Wood. He still has a chance. Let's go to Kit out on 17 with Sanjust. Some anxious moments there for San Just as he saw his tee shot come up the left hand side here, just a couple of yards in from going into some pretty deep foliage. But now he's got a tricky shot. The ball is going to be below his feet. It's going to want to go left to right in the air. And with that pin just towards the right half of the green, the last thing he wants to do is let it slide too much and lose himself short sided. Is he going to be aggressive? He knows he probably needs birdie. He's got to fire at this one, but miss it and he could fall back. Well, there we have it. The members are out. I've got to take me out off to them. They uh, absolutely loving this. Thanks for giving the golf course up, lads. Volunteers as well, all the members getting involved. We see San just here ripping one in high and from left to right. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes. We've seen uh, Dave Fife there, the chairman. You've got Shieldsy, you've got Millie, you've got Stevie, the greenkeeper. You've got all the staff in the catering and behind the bar. I mean, they all put in a massive effort and get this ball rolling as we see McCarroll here. It's the shortest of the par fours. Yes, this hole is, uh, really gives an opportunity. One or two players taking the green on and found the green but McCarroll going on the more conservative route but still gives himself a birdie opportunity yeah definitely the play I mean it's just a 5-4 iron and then you've got a sand iron in the second shot so you see Young here yeah this 12th hole really giving it up short par 5 this is second shot and oh finding the dance floor very hard and bouncy and once you get a good drive you get it on the right line I mean he's gone down the right there with his drive so he's gone, gone in with a little bit longer than you would normally I have to say, I was impressed with this shot. It's not easy with the ball below your feet out the rough, because it's very easy for the rough to tangle around the hosel and close the club face. And, uh, you know, he got it on the green. That wasn't an easy putt, as you could see. It was a big, big swing. So it's, we always say oh, it's a birdie putt, but in reality, from where he was there, this is a good two putt. Yeah, you're not wrong. I've had many three putts on this green, Gary, I'll tell you. I can be a little bit devilish with that pin at the front. A safe par in the end for the man from Tuscany. And this man is from a long way from Tuscany, Irishman Brendan McCarroll. He's been a runner-up a couple of times on the Euro Pro, made his debut on it as long ago as 2009, and his favourite course, Ballyliffin, which is just getting ready to stage the Irish Open. When it is such a packed leaderboard and, and quite a changeable course like this, how difficult is it to know what constitutes a good score? Um, well, the wind has switched from the first day, and it's made the course a lot tougher. 
So my 68 yesterday was definitely a lot better than the 68 the first day. Um, so I reckon if another 68, I think we'll get the job done. You've won multiple times on other mini tours before. What can you use from those experiences today? Uh, just like I said, you just concentrate on my own game and don't really get fixated on uh, the other players. Uh, because even guys who are on six under two, somebody could come up through the pack easily. And if you're just stuck on one person, you might end up just losing track of your own game. So here is McCarroll now, looking for yet another birdie to get to 11 under par. Got such a good short game, his wedges, his putting. Been so impressive over the last few weeks. This man can immediately go straight back ahead of him. He can eagle effort slightly off the left. Oh, took a little hop there. Why not? That should be a full man of the birdie there. Just a foot, foot and a bit from the hole. Now this is where San Just has driven it too. Probably needs a birdie to have any chance. And he made his debut on the Euro Pro last week. Finished a long way down at Montrose. Coming from a good side though here. Although the pins tucked behind that bunker. A little bit easier from the left side of the fairway there. And that's a... Hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot. And all bad. That's going to be a slow putt though for his, for his birdie. As you see Young there. Just tapping in for yet another birdie. Sanjust's birdie putt is straight back up the hill and it's a steep hill. He will really need to hit this one firmly, but there's not a lot of break on it and there'll be even less with the pace he needs to play it with. Can he hold this and post 11 under as the clubhouse target? And there we go, all the locals going around enjoying it. Now this is that putt Kit's talking about and he's going to have to give this an almighty thump and you just never know. The closing stages, closing holes are tough beauties. 11 under could be a good benchmark. Oh, and I tell you what, I was on its way in, I feel. Bit more ounce in that, and I think it would have disappeared on him. This is Runcy, who didn't manage a top 10 in 10 events last season, but well on course to get one today. Yep, former winner, a couple of seasons ago. Good player, Adam Runcy. Playing nicely today, come on. Oh, Easy enough with the putter. I've always been envious of his hairdo, though, Gary. Got a nice, nice hairdo. Yeah, that's true. You've got even less than me. We haven't got enough hair. <laughs> we have only sort of hairdo, you and I. <laughs> I know. So we see McCarroll there. I tell you what, good connection out of the. Well, just in the first cut, you can see. Gets a nice strike. Able to control the spin once it lands on the green. And it's that hairdo I'm talking about. Adam Runcie just off the fringe for Eagle. This to get to one behind. Yeah, got the Robert Rock vibe going on. Not wearing the cap, showing off his locks. And that's just come up a bit shy, but that'll be a tap in birdie. So San just, just to finish off here. Four birdies in a row around the turn. He had another at the short 14th. Then four pars to finish for the Italian, who didn't have a single drop shot in his 65. He equals the course record and sets the target at 10 under par. Another 65. We've seen a few already this week with Campbell early doors. And I tell you what, it hasn't been broken. Surprised me, actually. I thought someone might get to eight under or beyond. Runcy just finishing up here at the 12th, which has played the easiest hole on the course over the first two rounds. Almost half a stroke under par average. As we look at McCarroll running it up the hill. That putt really looks as though it's going to break as well from the right there, but it just keeps tracking along dead straight. Difficult yeah. to read. It is a good pin position, that one. Anything that's kind of pin I left, very awkward one to read. So that par at the eighth keeps McCarroll in the share of the lead with Mark Young. They're both on 11 under par. San just in the clubhouse now on 10 under. The waiting game starts for him. He's joined on that score by Dean and Bedford as they head towards the closing stretch. And John has been out to the 14th.
Well, here we come to the last of the par threes, the 14th, and what a cracker. Save the best to last. And I tell you what, this one, down the hill, real steep slope there, plays 180, but really, honestly, about 150 yards for the boys, about 30 yards difference down the slope. Now, little cracker this, and you want to be aiming just right half of this green, down to a big green that comes sloping back towards you, two bunkers guarding front right, front left as well, little avenue, but you won't be having that. You'd be coming down with such a height, you'll probably have a load of backspin on it. Now, I'm out with a nine iron, lovely elevated tee, looking right over a beautiful valley. You're just about to go into the four hardest holes on the golf course. Well, you better get a bird of the air, aren't you? Now, out right, with a little soft nine iron, down the slope, back of the stance, keep it below the hole if you've got a, a chance. And I tell you what, that's not a bad one. Get down a little bit, get down a bit, don't want to be too long. He's at the back of the green, he stopped dead. Oh, we're going to have a sneaky 20 footer down the slope, but you've got to take it. And on 14, it's Joe Dean, who actually qualified for the Open at Birkdale last year and indeed made it through to the weekend. Yeah, good player, Joe. And this hole can easily catch you out. The wind just comes over your head. You know, if you get it all high ball flight, you can find yourself at the back of the green, easy peasy. But he's controlled that really well. And as you can see, that flag not fluttering much. And uh, yeah, target golf out there for the boys at the moment, as we see Edwards. Yeah, I should mention he had an eagle two at the ninth a short while ago. Second one we've seen there today. James Simpson was the other. Looking closely after it. I think he likes it. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, fancy that from there. He's not too far away from that pin. Chip and eagle chance. There really aren't any bad swings, are there, on any tour now? I mean, these guys, they all swing the club. It goes up and down on the line. Um, it, it looks lovely. All the role models in the world nowadays, I mean, they copy them. They, they look so similar. Great swings. We see Bedford out of the left rough. Going straight at it, and what a shot that is. Pin eye left. And he will have that for an eagle, which would take him into the outright lead. And this one going to slightly move off his right-hand side. He'll be aiming this just about a ball, ball and a half outside the right. It'll be nice and firm. Oh, right. Stayed there. It stayed there, Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. I thought I was going to come back too. Yeah, he read it like you. He can't believe it. You can't believe it, and neither can he. No, I'm flabbergasted on that one, Gary. So, uh, let's have a look at the 13th. Very short par four, just 300 yards. A lot of the guys, it's a bit tight down by the green, but a lot of the guys will have a go at this one with the driver, because if you can thread one through there, obviously you're on the green for an eagle par. Guarded, as you can see, by a couple of bunkers on the left and the cops of the trees left. Green itself is a sort of kidney shape. What you don't want to go is down to the right, because you'll be down in those woods down there. But this offers a lot of potential. And look at him, he's seen it all before. I hear I'm in all my fine plumage. Look at me, what do you think of that then? Here I am. I bet he's got a couple of Sheilas on him up. Young has just had his seventh birdie of the day on 12, so he's tied for the lead with McCarroll. Yeah, it looks like he's having a... A good move this is, and that is a great shot, threading it through the trees, getting it near the front edge of the green, and that's a brave shot by Mark. Now got to be fancying this. You can see it just slightly back in his stance. It's got a lofty club, just going to pitch it onto the green. It should run out nicely. It's in with a chance. Flag is out, and in she pops. What an eagle. Oh, it? oh, yeah, it's his second of the day. Is he going to mark his first season with a win? Yeah, lovely. Chip, I think he listened to your advice perfectly, John. Off it goes, and in it goes. As we go over to the kit on the 13th. Well, Young's got a bit unlucky there, a fantastic drive, and he's just found an old divot mark, and that's gonna make up the decision for him of whether he putts or chips. From here, he's got to chip. Expect to see him get a little bit steeper into the back of the ball, and that's gonna make it pop up a little bit more. If he can make that adjustment well, this is a great opportunity for another birdie for our leader. Let's see what he does here. Kit? Do you think he's gonna think like Kit's head? I think he is. I think he's going to go for more of a bumpy runny, I would have thought. 
Yeah, there we go. Trapping it. Roll it like a putt, but he's overdone it. And that wasn't easy. And like you say, a little bit disgruntled there. Unfortunate light at the front of the green. So Young will have a putt to go 12 under. Bedford, though, can get to that score right here. And good chance here, just slightly off the left for his eagle. Oh, just misses high side, and that's finished right behind the hole. Look at this. Oh, just an ounce more or less energy, and that was in. Mark Young may feel a bit disappointed off a good tee shot if he doesn't convert this into a birdie. A bit defensive, that one, it? Yeah, up and out of that one, Gary. See Ashley's playing partner's marker near the hole. Yeah, a few words himself under his breath, I feel. It's just to tidy up. Yeah, he's birdied this hole in every round and goes into a share of the lead now with six to play. What an ever-changing leaderboard this is. Mark Young, 11 under. Mike Bedford, as we've just seen, has joined him there. Owen Edwards with that eagle on 12, also getting to that score, and McCarroll as well. Stan just in on 10 under. He's still got a chance. So have Dean and Jackson. They've still got some holes to play. It's a four-way tie at the top as the final group head towards the back nine here at Clevedon. The outcome is still very much in the balance as we head into the decisive stage of the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship at Clevedon in Somerset. Four players, all looking for their first ever Euro Pro Tour win, are tied for the lead and all still out on the course. The English pair, Mark Young and Mike Bedford, Welshman Owen Edwards, who's had two eagles in his round today, and Ireland's Brendan McCarroll, they're all 11 under. Rocco Sanjos needs them all to slip up if he's to win. Joe Dean and Luke Jackson are alongside him on 10 under. As you can see from the flag, the wind has really laid down this afternoon, and that's one of this course's chief defences. So without it, it's going to play a lot easier. Through most of the week, the back nine has been tougher than the front nine. But with these conditions this afternoon and no wind, we're going to see far more birdies and eagles on the back nine from the leaders today. So, cross on the 11th, McCarroll, his second shot, just out of the light semi. He's been an ever-present on the Euro Pro so far this season. Tied eight that Studley Wood is best performance. And that's a cracking shot. Beautifully judged. Control that. Not easy there because it slightly runs away. Very easy to let it go over the back of that green. Good shot. Yeah, he's going to have a nice easy putt from there. Straight up the hills. We see Campbell here at 12. Nice drive off the tee. Setting up a well, kind of a simple Simon second. Looking down onto the green. Pin back right today. And that's pin eye left. We know that one breaks off the left-hand side. Hasn't really kept up with the pace today. 36 on the front nine, birdied the 10th, par on 11. But he's going to have an eagle put there on 12 as we go back to Jackson. Yeah, off the right for Jackson. Oh! Cellophane bridge right behind the hole. That's got to hurt. Started the week as joint winner of the Pro-Am along with Joe Dean. They both shot 66 in that. So the Falkirk man, Campbell, just outside the left. Oh, again, it just the pace has beaten it. it. It swung, but after the hole. You're right there, Gary, just the pace. Now this one, you couldn't leave yourself an easier putt on this green. Up the hill, probably just inside the right, could be nice and firm. And in she goes, honestly. That is a great birdie. Tough green this is at 11. He goes to 12 under, which means that having just had a put to tie the lead, Campbell now needs to hold this to avoid going three behind. Never in doubt. Here's John now on the 15th. 
Well, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing. This is 15, the stretch of four holes that are really tough at Clevedon Golf Club. I mean, this par four, 437 yards. It's going to play longer than that for the boys because it plays uphill. I mean, it looks like it's down, but then it just rises up to a very narrow green. Trees all the way down the right-hand side. You'll spot a couple of deer in there time and time again. Always having a little thing, having a little drink in the pond here just off the, the forward tees. You've got big trees down the left as well. I mean, they cause havoc for you, but such a tight drive. I mean, you stand on it and you you think oh my goodness how am I gonna get there in two but honestly you've got to commit to this baby crunch time as well you've made all your scores on the first 14 holes and then you've got these four to try and hold on to it you're jumping at the bit you're one shot in the lead and you've got to go par 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 to win it by one it's not going to be easy this tee shot is all about taking dead aim aim at the flag in the distance don't leave your eye off it get focused and rip one and I tell you what, that is as pure as you like. Straight down the middle, rifled, in the middle cut, might little bounce to the left, will hold the fairway, make your par all day long here. <sighs> I tell you what, breathe a sigh of relief. Job well done. And here's Young, who has followed your directions, John, and slept bang in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, it looks like you've got quite a lofty club in the region 9 8, aren't you? Gone straight at it. You can tell by the spin how lofted it was. That was a big drive. Mark, six under par for the round so far. How do you feel it's all going? Um, I got off to the fast start. I needed to. Um, then I was just, just trying to give myself so many chances to, to make birdies. Well, I've started three behind. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm level, I think, at the minute. But, yep. Um, just give myself, I'll give myself four chances on the way in. That's all I can ask for. Yeah, tough finishing holes, but not as much wind today. How much easier is the course playing because of that? Yeah, a lot easier. We had the tough wind yesterday. Um, as you told us by the scores, the scoring wasn't as good as the first day. Um, but yeah, no wind makes it a little easier. Mm -hmm. I'm playing with Ash Mansell, local boy. How good are these crowds to play it's in? It's nice front? to have a few people walking around. Shouldn't lose a ball, should we? Absolutely. Keep it going, Mark. Well <laughs> Thank played. you. He only turned pro when he was 33. He was more into football in his 20s, but some members of his club, Longridge, encouraged him to give pro golf a go. And they backed him financially to get started in it. Yeah, good shout that, as we see Adam here at the 14th, par three. Yeah, this one's going to be a hard camera follow for the boys. They'll be seeing the ball land on the green. As we see McCarroll here on the left-hand side of the 12th. Looking for a hat-trick, having birdied this hole in both previous rounds. Well, maybe even something better today. Adam Runcie, following that very good tee shot. Keep this inside the hole, slippery down the hill, and well done, very nice. What a back nine he's having, that's three birdies in five holes now. And he's putting it together, my God, he really is. Luke Jansen out though. The other side of the fairway at 12 from the right hand side, total different kind of shot, plays a bit longer. Not easy to get to that right flag either, but he's done a good job. Look at this, but bounding through. Just off the back edge of the green. Not too far away either. Now, this is a putt up the hill, off the right-hand side for birdie. For Mark Young, in front of the home crowds. Chance to join McCarroll in the lead, although probably not for very long. Managing his game very, very well today, and he's just, as he said, walking up there with Kit. If I can give myself a chance, okay, it hasn't gone in, but it, it's quite nice when you've only got six inch putts to. Oh, yeah, tap Gary. In. It is indeed. It's nice to him to have a little chat with Kit as well. It's very rare, you know, they're, they're under the course, a lot of pressure. They're in the zone. As you see, Edwards here, just in a spot of bother under the tree. Pitching this onto the edge should release a bit, but it's on a bit of an upslope, and yeah, that's going to come up a bit shy. Now, this could be a huge move. It's been so congested at the top of the leaderboard, but he could open a lot of breathing space here, McCarroll. This to go three shots clear with six holes to play. Oh, oh, she. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there it is! Mate, we all thought that for a minute it was staying above ground, but my goodness. 
I think he'd looked away and didn't see it topple in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a putt. I mean, what a delay reaction. You could just see when it went in, his, his reaction there. He thought for a minute, oh, no, not another one. And, yeah. and eventually, that's the seventh eagle on that hole today. And with only 50 players, that's remarkable. He's opened up a gap now. You see this par effort, and that's going to squeeze by, and that's going to be a foot putt for bogey for yeah. Edwards. Yeah, and with what McCarroll's just done, all of a sudden Edwards is now going to be four behind. So we see Luke Jackson. Just a bit awkward, this, coming across a bit of fringe grass. Yeah, it's hopped and bobbed a bit. Yeah, threw it off to the left. When I said Edwards was going to be four behind, it's actually going to be five because he missed that bogey putt. So this, for a five here, he goes back to nine under and he might well have just played his way out of it right there. So we jump back to Jackson, where we left him with this 30-incher. Yep. And that means the entire field has gone through this hole today without a single drop shot. The pin here on 16 is perched right on a tabletop at the back of the green, a very steep tier in front of it. Under 100 yards, just 96 for Mark Young here. It's of a slight downslope, a little bit into the rough, but the grass is going with it, so he shouldn't have to worry about a flyer. The last thing he wants to do is go long, but he knows he's tied for the lead and he knows he needs to make more birdies. Well, he won't know it because of events elsewhere, but he's no longer tied for the lead, but that only underlines Kit's point about how he needs birdies, probably at least two of the last three, maybe even all three of them, starting here at 16. What a shot that is, landing it up on the top, back portion of that green and stopping it dead out of the rough. Fair play, Mark. Top shot there. I am nominating that as shot of the day. Yeah, that ain't easy at all. I've had that shot over the years many times. As we look at Joe Dean, looking rather disgruntled with that effort and see just turned him over back left a long putt yes yeah, good looking swing this from jodine powerful player everything looked right club just got a bit sort of stuck in the ground didn't it yeah luke jackson represents lindrick in yorkshire as we were saying earlier he was second behind adam runcie at frilford heath a couple of years ago his best ever result on the euro pro and his best so far this season tied 16th at harleyford before setting off today he had a word with kiss how aggressive can you be on a course like this in these conditions you can be very aggressive i think i think um, obviously there's a lot of people in contention who win the tournament so playing too conservative would not be a good thing but then again there's certain par fours which you can attack and not attack so we're back on a tee jackson here at 13. And looks like he's got a little wood in his hands so that means he's having a pop at it he needs to get this one going from left to right and thread it through i know the needle got trees right trees left oh he's got a nice back oh look at this what a shot just running through towards the back edge of the green just holds on top shot from there yeah, that really was a fine effort. As we go back to Joe Dean, 17th, pin high, but 15 yards or so across this green with this big, big swing. Probably not going to win, but set for his third top 10 finish of the season on the Euro Pro Tour. This man might win, Mark Young, only been pro since 2014, as I said. And you'll see there, only a year later, he won final qualifying for the Open at St Andrews and just missed the cut in a championship which was won by Zach Johnson. His favourite player is a former Open winner, Ernie Els. Yeah, the big easy. Now, what a tap in that is. Birdie at 16 for Mark Young. If he does win, you have a feeling he'll point to that up and down as the key moment. And this is a little tester. Do you go firm? Which is what he tried to do. But if you're going to go firm, you've got to keep it inside the hole, John. <laughs> well, they said, Gary, I've had many three putt on this green, I tell you, and it's not an easy baby at all. The little knee knockers, anything from two, three feet out, any swing on it, you've got to be firm and positive. Now, this is massive for Jackson. He can get within one of McCarroll here. A 
Three on it, wasn't a bad effort. Just missing on the right hand side, but that's a tap in birdie for Jackson. So Brendan McCarroll has become the first man to really take this final round by the scruff of the neck on 14 under. He's two ahead of Mark Young, who's picked up seven shots on the day so far. And also Luke Jackson, who's got five to play. Don't write off Mike Bedford either. Although for Sanjust, time has probably run out now. Is Brendan McCarroll taking the title back to Ireland? And Eagle put him 12 has put him in charge as he chases his first Euro Pro win here at Clevedon. We had one of the most exciting finishes ever to the World Snooker Championship at the Crucible in May, and plenty of drama here heading towards the climax of the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship at Clevedon in Somerset. It's Brendan McCarroll in control of things for the moment on 14 under, but plenty of time for it all to change. Young and Jackson, the two Englishmen, only two behind, and Bedford not out of this either. He's three back with four holes still to go. And here he is on 15. Yeah, down the left-hand side, nice tee shot, finding the fairway. Good butcher to this flag. Very central, slight leftage, quite three-quarters of the way up the green. He's done the first part well, but that's going to be a slope up the hill, a little bit of right to left. A spot of bother here, Gary. It certainly looks like it, yeah. Young's pulled his tee shot left, and he's trying there to have a sort of quick whip round the trees and I think he's done a pretty good job with that got it up front right yeah there's a few little overhanging trees just there yeah he's hit a drive down the left hand side and it's just well could have been a lot worse but he's taken his medicine just got it back out just run over the other side of the fairway but not a bad angle to try and chip it close it's a young battling for par on 17 and Jackson with five holes left probably the more likely of the men on 12 under to challenge McCarroll now it is a lovely par three, this. Although from the back tee, you can't actually see the, the pin, so you have to pick a spot on the on the hill the other side and rip it at it. Yeah, there's a few tr trees you can aim at, actually, the other side of the valley. As we see Bedford here, well, how far right is he going to be aiming this? A good foot and a bit. Swings early doors, levels out. Not a bad effort. Tied sixth at Montrose last week. Great chance to better that today. This is going to be very important for Mark Young. Can he get himself out of jail? Certainly giving himself a chance. He has indeed. I'm just thinking back at that 16th hole, what a shot that was. And that's going to be a defining moment if something comes up. So we see Jackson here off the left hand side for a two. Track in, and in she goes. Three birdies in a row, and back to one behind as we go to Kit on the 17th green. Young's below the hole for his par here. It's a tricky putt, a lot of swing on this green, but just something to be careful of. A couple of groups previously have overread their putts and missed four footers. This is a little bit longer, so it is gonna swing from the left, but he's really gotta be careful around the hole. The last thing he wants to do is leave another tricky putt if this one doesn't go in. Well, here it is, moment of truth. Off the left hand side, if you're aiming this, ooh, you can say 10 inches outside it. It's going to swing early and straight across the face of the hole she goes. Tricky putt that one for Mark, and that's going to be a bogey. Gives it straight back. And that looks like being the end of his hopes. Last hole, 18, just under 400 yards long. And I tell you what, the boys are going to fancy their chances coming up here. Now, the fairway slopes from right to left, not making it easy to hold this fairway. These big conifer trees here, right and left, they're so dense, a ball, if it goes up there, ain't going to come out. So you might see a little bit of heartache when it comes to the players coming up the last if they slightly leak a drive. Just watch me grip down the shaft, bit Tommy Fleetwood-ish. Going to work one in there, control my ball flight, keep it below the pin. Hopefully it works. And there it swings round right to left, just gone behind the hole. But I tell you what, let's go up to the green because I want to show you how severe this baby is. 
Right, here we go, up onto the 18th green. We are very exposed area, wind coming off your right hand side, and this green just slopes massively from right to left. I mean, that is rapid down there. Slightly overcut one, I mean, I aimed way right on my second shot there, used the contours, slightly overdone it, and that's left me a tricky one. Down the slope, little bit of break to left to right, but when if they go and put the pin down around this area, my goodness, I mean, watch this. I mean, you ain't got to do much to it. I mean, the greens aren't mega fast, but look at this baby. It ain't really going to stop. It's just going to keep going. And it's a really awkward green to read. And I tell you what, just cozy this one out, whole side and you'll be happy. It's not an easy putt. And the way the greens are running, it's not easy. And I tell you what, I've just mellowed that one down there. And that's going to be a tap in four. And that might be enough to win this tournament. Cleveland Golf Club, be proud. Drift back to find Joe Dean right in the middle of the 18th fairway. Can he pull out a cracker of a shot? He certainly can. Lovely shot. Yeah, beauty there, Gary. Cracking drive, like you say, set up a nice second shot in as we see. Well, oh, Ryan Campbell here at 15, missing his second shot way left. This is third now. Won't be able to see the bottom of the flag from here. Lofting it really high. And, oh, he's played a beauty. Go in. Oh, what an up and down that's going to be for a par. Good hands there for a big chap. Yeah, it's all gone a bit quiet for him today. Might still have had a glimmer of hope if that one had gone in. All really about playing for position and prize money at this stage. So we go to Runcie, who's not dropped a shot all day. Yeah, gone along very steadily. Going to pick up some money this week. Cool, that's going to be some putt from there, Gary. I was, I was just thinking that as I said that. <laughs> I was just waiting for it to pull that on on four. Oh, my God. Rather in than me. Yeah. Now, just outside left. Be nice and firm. And in she goes. Well done, Joe. Well, that bogey on 17 was his only dropped shot of the day in a fine 67. Dean joins Sanjust as the clubhouse leader on 10 under. Almost certainly not going to win, but another high finish in store for Joe Dean. Yeah, good result there for Joe. Now Jackson down the left at 15. He's coming over from the 16th fairway. Obviously spot a bother off his tee shot. Played, opted to go up the 16th, leave himself a, well, an awkward third shot as we see Young here with his approach to the final hole. Birdied it yesterday, really needs to do the same again and then hope for a miracle. Yeah, cracking shot, working its way down towards the pin. Quite a quick rhythm. Fairly narrow uh, in the arc, you know, which you see much wider arcs. Is it's a slightly old-fashioned swing? Perhaps it's a 30-year-old swing. It is indeed. He's 36 now, Gary. I don't run. So yeah, this is that putt we're talking about. Now this is right across the green. Lots of break from left to right. Going to get speedy as it gets closer to the hole. And I tell you what, you take that all day long. Now the leader is back on 15 and Kit is with him. From over on this left side of the green, McCarroll's on a slight upslope. That'll help him get some extra loft on the ball and he's gonna need it. The greens are pretty firm. He's not gonna be able to make a full swing. So spin will not be his friend here. The only way to stop it is with height. We've seen a couple of guys knock it close from this sort of range today. So it is definitely possible. Oh. There's Millie's little girl, Charlotte, wandering around with McCarroll holding the board. Now, like Kit said, just pop this one up nicely, land it on the fringe. Was that a hard bounce, Gary? Yeah, it was a very hard bounce. That, but a, a good hop forward. Played as the hardest hole on the course over the first two rounds, only yielded 20 birdies across those two days. Now, big moment this for Young, guys. It is indeed, and this is a fast putt off the right-hand side. Nurture this one down if it drops. Happy days. Oh, he hasn't hit it. Oh, I think that was on its way in as well. That was tracking. Thanks, more pace, and that was a birdie finish. Well, he had four birdies in a row to start on the way to being out in 30. A bit of a mixed bag after that. He's the new clubhouse leader, but 11 under looks unlikely to be good enough.
So Jackson's birdie for after that excellent shot. Not a lot of break on this. Just never quite got it on the right line. It's often very difficult, John, when you get a, a really a straight putt to actually be able to read it. I know that yeah. sounds daft, but... No, it's true, though, because you try and read too much into it as well, though. You know it's straight. You think it's straight, and you just think, well, no, look at that coming off the right. So it must move a little bit, and you, you kind of just nurture yourself to play for it, and then it doesn't come back, and you think, oh, what a donut. And that miss means McCarroll will go to the 16th tee, leading by two, assuming this goes in, which it has. So still very much in charge of this. 14 under, three holes to play. Jackson, the only realistic challenger to him now. It's all about this final group. We can get him up here. Look at those trees in the background at 17. Nice low ball flight needed. Hang it up the left-hand side, then let the, the rolling ferry from left to right feed you down into a flat lie. You don't get many flat lies around this golf course, though, guys, because these fairways are very severe. And that one just running into the right rough, and there's his playing partner's ball as well. Now our leader, McCarroll, winding this one up. Find the fairway. Might be going a bit left, that, I think. Oh, it certainly is. Russell, Russell, clatter, clatter. He's somewhere in there. Well, I've been down there a few times, Gary. I mean, that looked a nice swing, but yeah, just overcooked it, and boy, it could, he could have any lie down there. Brendan, good stuff so far. Three holes to play. How are you feeling? Uh, a bit nervous on the last hole, but a bit more settled now after getting up and down I needed there, so. Yeah, yeah, lovely up and down there, great for momentum. And how important were those two threes on 11 and 12 at that stage as well? Yeah, definitely, because we both looked at the scoreboard and saw that there's a good few people on 11 under. So we both turned to each other and said, I think we need a few birdies here. So it's nice to roll in the one on 11 and then I rolled a long one in on 12. So that was even nicer. So definitely gives me a bit less stress coming down the straight. So how aware of you, how you stand exactly as we walk down the uh, 16th fairway now? Um, yeah, I always look at leaderboards to see where I'm sitting. So, yeah, I know I'm a couple of heads, and if I can stay there, great. Good luck on the final few holes, Brendan. Cheers. Well, here we go. Scots are up to 17. As you see, Bedford off the right, and he's it's an uphill putt, and you'll see a lot of putts on that right hand side so come up short of that hole. Yeah, he sees that as an opportunity gone there. So we see where Brendan finished, Gary. Yep, drop down, no route out. So he's taken his medicine, put it back in the middle of the fairway. Got a couple of shots. He didn't seem all that phased talking to Kit that he had gone into the trees. Yeah, a Campbell, a little bit of uh, hindering from the tree. You can see that low little scamper from left to right, bumping it up onto the green. He's done a good job. That's a bit heavy handed, slowed down a bit. Just hangs on to the back fringe. That's going to be a slick little third one from there. Now, Jackson is bound to be looking at McCarroll's problems and thinking, hang on, the door could be opening for me just a little here. Yeah, he's in a good spot there. Able to look down to this top tier. And, uh, not easy, is it, to get one onto that top tier? Again, it looks right. Three-quarter length swing. The dangers are, though, Gary, you're coming out of a bit of a fly lie, bit of a jumpy lie, bit of a duffy lie, all rolled into one, pin at the back, not much green to work with, over a tree, over water, not easy. No. Ooh, right hand's off a bit quick there. Cool, what hand there, Gary? Do you know, I fancy, if you look at it just closely here, do you think the ball's just sitting down a bit? I'm, I'm not sure that... Yeah, look at the way he don't. Do you think that might have been even a bit of an old divot there? Definitely, Gary. He's coming really steep on that. No need to do that any other way. Uh, yeah, I would say that was an awkward lie in the rough, that, in the fairway, I should say, in the divot. Yeah, the, the amount of sort of sand and seed that came up, I think it was an old seed-filled divot. Oh, cool. that was worth a few bob, I'd imagine. Mm. Just missing on the left-hand side. At least he give it a go. Not an easy putt from there. And look at that, a flawless round of goal. Four birdies. The rest pars, beautiful 68, 10 under par, double digits. Would you believe he didn't drop a shot at any hole on the back nine all week? 
Wow, that's that is very impressive, especially how tough those last four holes are. He's a handsome fellow, Runcina. He might just double up for James Bond as we wait for Mr. McCarroll. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. And McCarroll, oh, it's a little bit left. That's going to leave himself a lot of work to be done. He's making a bit of a hash of 16. I think that was a bit unfortunate, though. Like you said, Gary, just that lie in the fairway, finding a divot. Now the old heart's bitter pattering, though, a bit. Cool, yeah, not off. And it could bring Campbell back into it if this goes in. Yeah, slick number, this one. I'll go down the hill, off the right-hand side. It's got to be one of the toughest greens to read. It really is. Slopes all the way down to the front. So Jackson has this for a share of the lead with two to play, at least. Yeah, but this ain't easy. This is up a very steep tier that runs through the middle of this green. And look how short that comes up. You've got to give it some welly. Look at that. Now you can see the slope. What these boys got to put up. And he's, he's only 15, 20 feet away from him, and he's having to attend it for him. Now, this is really going to test his nerve and his composure and everything else that comes into play when you're trying to clinch your first win. Well, we can't see the hole, but I think his expression said it all. That's a horrible double bogey at such an awful time. But Carroll slips to 12 under. Jackson has his put to stay there. And leave them tied with two to go. That's put a spanner in the works, hasn't it? Now Jackson, to save his par, gets it. What was all looking a bit done and dusted is suddenly uh, wide open. It certainly is. Between these two, they've both got two to go. They're both four under for the day, and they're both 12 under for the tournament. And is Mark Young now sitting there thinking maybe he's still got some more golf to play? He's in there on 11 under, waiting to see what happens. Thoughts of a potential playoff as the field gathers at the top of the leaderboard. We'll make the decisive move. Find out after the break. Suddenly, we have a race for the title again in the final round of the Jesse May World Snooker Golf Championship at Clevedon in Somerset, the fifth event of the Euro Pro Tour season. Brendan McCarroll looked to be cruising to victory, but that horrible double bogey on 16 now leaves him in a tie for the lead with Luke Jackson, who showed a lot of nerve to make his par foot and ensure they'd be tied with two to go. And I wonder if Mark Young is just hitting a few putts somewhere in anticipation of potential extra holes to come. Here we go, 17. Many times I've played up this, you've got to be aiming up the left-hand side, just flirt with the rough and the fairway, hit it on the left-hand side, it'll feed down to the right, and that opens up for a lovely second shot. Little bit of a raised green for your approach shot, very difficult, green faces you, bunker on the left-hand side. If you short-side yourself here, not an easy up and down. This could easily catch out a few of the players. Great hole. Yeah, this 17th, I really do think, is a very, very strong finishing hole. You've got to, as you say, John, hold it up the left, because if not, it can kick down off the sloping fairway. And that looks very good. It will, with the firmness of the fairways just run off, but it's a good spot. It's not a bad spot. He's going to play a little bump and run from there, but normally those holes, 17, 18, play into the wind, so a little bit tougher, as we see Bedford here with his approach at 18. Gone up a bit shy and zipping it off the, to the front edge. How does McCarroll put the events of the previous hole out of his head? He looks like the sort of guy who's got the composure to do that kind of thing. Yeah, well, he's standing on here. Nice kind of low ball flight. If you can draw it, happy days into the slope. Looks to be down the left. Is it going to bounce out? No, it's going to stay up in that rough. And it's going to be a tricky one, but the lie looks nice. We saw Edwards fall out of contention with that double bogey on 14. He's followed that with three straight pars, so nine under as he plays the last. Yeah, ball slightly below his stance. Going to make him fade this one from right to left. And there you go. There's the spin as well to boot, and that's feeding off the green. And that's going to be a... Well, we've seen that, but very slow. As we find Brendan McCarroll in the first cut up on the left side of this 17th. 
No trees in his way, but oh dear, the old right hand's off a bit quick there. He doesn't like it. Yeah, just got underneath it. Come up a bit shy there, Gary. It's going to be an awkward one. Very slow chip coming up. So with everything going on, who knows? This could be the put for Bedford to get into a playoff. We do know it's to join Mark Young in on 11 under, but it's a big ask. It is up the hill, right to left, very slow. Bit like San Juiced, Dean and Runcy. All coming up a bit shy to get to 11 under. Back to 17 and Kit. This is going to be a real test of Jackson's shot making prowess. He's come over here onto the right and as you can see these branches in front are blocking him out. The pin is over on the right. He can get a punch shot up there but he's going to have to work it left to right. The natural contours are going to help him but I think he's going to need to put a bit of action on it himself as well. It's getting all a bit nervy out here now. Who can come through and get their hands on that trophy? And it might be neither of these two, and Mark Young must be feeling a bit like Paul Laurie at Carnoustie in 99, in with a score which didn't look like being good enough, and then some errors from his rivals changed everything. Well, Jackson's given this a good go, played the right sort of shot, but it's not easy when you're coming out of there to get the strength of the shot right, so he's now got an awkward chip to our very awkward green. It is indeed. Bottle toppy. Now, Edwards... We've seen this, but many times up the hill. We know how slow it is. How hard is he going to hit it? Give it a go. Get the double figures. He's giving it a ride there. He's got a slick one coming back. Little knee knocker. Well, McCarroll just must be feeling growing pressure with every shot. He'd have to be not human not to. Yeah, you would. This one not easy. Just in cut stuff and this one not able to get the spin he was re needed and that's going to be a horrible little right to left or down the hill to save his part just sort of encapsulated everything that's happened to him in the last 25 minutes half an hour it is indeed and that's a nice composed putt yeah that two at the ninth jumps out of his card he had another eagle at the 12th on the way to a 69 which will deliver the welshman's best result so far now watch this one, Gary. He's going to land it up on a very hard patch, which is at the back of this green, and it's just going to fly down the hill. This is going to be speedy Gonzalez, slow down ball. That is not the place you want to miss it. And look at that. Just doesn't want to stop, and frustration there. You could hear that. Not easy. Mark Young might be starting to think he won't even need to go to a playoff. He's probably packing his bags and getting in the car ready to take a journey home, but no, he ought to stop. As we see, Mike Bedford here, just the one blip, come at 16. The rest were birdies, and that's a nice 68, 10 under par, double digits. Big group building up on that score as we return to the trials of Luke Jackson. As we can see, having a go with the putter now. Back up the hill, going to give it a bit of a wallop. Well, we're getting closer is about the best we can say. Yeah, you're right there, Gary. As we see Campbell here at the final hole, 18. Only four players have birdied it all day. If Campbell can become the fifth, he might just have some more golf to play. Oh, it looks to be going right. There is those thick trees I said about. Always missed them. It's caught the fast lane, and that is a monster. That's so far up there. He's going in with like a lob wedge, if not just a soft sand iron. Now, massive putt here. Down the hill, just outside the right. Looked a bit tentative, and that's three shots gone and two holes. What must he be thinking now? Well, there you go. You've got Jackson coming up next. That's going to be for bogey as well. They're all dropping shots. We're all doing the math, look, looking at the phone. Oh my goodness, Mark's back in the fold. Oh, it's all going crazy. Nicely done, showed a good bit of character again, just as he did on the previous hole. So three of them now tied on 11 under. Goodness me, yes, as you said, John, he's almost whacked it on the green. Sort of half an easy send on to get to the green. 
Yeah, nice at all, but you have going in with the most lofted club, able to generate loads of spin, and with if you've got too much right to left on it, and that spin as well, down to the edge of the green it goes. Now, look at this 18th. I mean, look how severe that slope is from right to left. You know, you've got the channel down on your right-hand side, the wind normally coming off the right-hand side. Very hard to hold it onto this ferry. Best way to do it is just fade it. Little left to rider, hold it up onto this ferry. Obviously, Campbell hit a monster drive going in with next to nothing. Now, with that pin over on the left, ideally, you want to do like Mark Young did. Hit it right there with a bit of right to left spin. Feed it down to that flag. But you're always going to see balls down on that left-hand side with a, a nasty slow putt up the hill. Good finishing all. Well, what looked like a two-horse race about half an hour ago now has four genuine contenders. Three of them still out on the course. He's not held back. Can he hold the fairway? I think he quite likes that one. Oh, and he's done well, Gary. He's done well. He's flirted with those trees. Now, big drive. That was, as we see Campbell there. It's a tough putt, but if he gets it, odds on it'll be a playoff for him. He's played well this week. My God, he really has. He deserves something to go for him. Off the right-hand side, slow putt, as we know, and that's nowhere near. Uh, disappointing finish. So his race has run as far as winning it's concerned. McCarroll has played this whole bogey par in the two previous rounds. And he, too, has not held back. Um, we can hear applause from the crowd. Good shot, good shot. Ooh. Oh. Through the cameraman's legs, yep. and out the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, we don't want to see a three putt. Come on, Ryan, knock him in. Inside right. Yes, good man. Did get into contention towards the end because of the mistakes of others, but never really got it going today. A 70 for Campbell, but largely because of that opening 65. He's going to get a top five finish, the first he's ever had on the Euro Pro Tour. And look at that, all the locals out. Pride of Cleveland all come out to see all this great golf. Now Jackson, no more than probably 80, 90 yards left in. Oh, and coming up shy as well. Look at all that backspin. Feeling down towards, there's a bunker guard on the left-hand side. Again, the swing size, the contact with the ball looks perfect, but just a misjudgment. Just didn't hit it hard enough. Arr. Now the door opens for the Irishman. Got to put everything behind him. Produce one good shot here. It could set him up for a winning birdie. Yeah, sure, because not a bad angle. Just overrun a little bit. That's going to be a slick one from there. Good shot, though. But it'll probably be a put to win. We've not seen many closer here on 18 than McCarroll right now when it really matters. He's left himself about 14 feet. It's down the hill. It's going to be quick, but you've got to get this one to the hole. You've got to give yourself a chance of winning that trophy. Well, McCarroll looked quite composed with that swing. He did indeed, Gary. As you see at the front of the green, Jackson here. Well, it's a lengthy number. It's a tall outside chance from right to left. It's always low. Don't get too far away from him. Stay there, ball. So McCarroll, in spite of everything, will have a putt to win the title. You will indeed. And you just get that action here, putting it through the fringe there, a little bump. And it took, took a bit of steam off it, got the ball rolling from right to left. And you can see Mark Young looking on here. at McCarroll down this slick putt from left to right. Oh, my goodness, that missed by a whisker. Yeah, it was very, very close. It all looked so good for McCarroll after an eagle at the 12th got him to 14 under, but two shots went on 16, another on 17. Could still have won it with a birdie at the last, but par for a 69 means extra time. Young in the playoff, McCarroll in the playoff. Jackson needs to make his par put to join them. It's his last chance. He deserves it. He's played well this to get in a three-way tie at the top oh that's a shame that is a shame 
on the march with three straight birdies in the middle of the back nine, but just a horrible finish with three bogeys in the last four. Jackson finishes one behind, and the wait for his first Euro Pro win will go on. Well, you can see that last four holes showing its teeth for both players, dropping shots left, right and centre, and, well, we're going to a playoff. Come on, Charlotte, get the board right. Mark Young's closing 66 then has unexpectedly turned out to be good enough for a playoff after McCarroll's late collapse. Rocco Sanjust set an early target with his bogey-free 65 and ends up sharing third with Runcy, who also got round without a drop shot, as well as Dean, Bedford, Campbell and Jackson. Well, this is going to be exciting. Playoff, McCarroll. They've both been in this situation once before on the Euro Pro Tour. Young was in a four-way playoff at the Carrick the season before last, won by Matthew Court. McCarroll was beaten by Nick Marsh in a playoff at Longhurst Hall last year. He's in a similar position. Nice swing here, really launches at it. Just a little bit dubious of those thick trees out of down the right, just missing it left as we see Mark now. Young on the tee, he's had a bit of a rest. He has, that's always difficult, you know, do you hit a few balls? I think he's been having a few looseners. He's giving it a hit, body lean, must be up the right-hand side looking at that uh, body language. Oh, just clipping the edge of the trees, and I tell you what, that's actually not too bad. On a little launch pad as well, he's going to be able to get some hype from here, and like you said, good flexibility in his swing, very old school as well, Gary. It is. It's narrower, sort of more wrist hinging than you see from a lot of players. Very strong left grip, isn't it? Very strong. Good strike. Sounded crisp. Oh, pitches up just shy of the flag and zips off to the edge of the green. It's a good action. You can see there, though how tight the wrist hinge is. And as you say, he's got a very sort of strong, hooky left-hand grip and a bit of a slicey right-hand grip, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Counteracts it beautifully. Now, McCarroll out the left rough. He had this shot earlier. Can he do the same? Oh, sounded a bit thick. Yeah, it did sound a bit fluffy, John. Yeah, bunker bound. You'll have to put a pound in the captain's box. He's played those shots so well throughout the tournament. It just shows the difference that pressure makes. It just becomes such a different game. It does indeed. And look at it. The intensity, the crowds are out. They're loving it. Just came in a, a bit steep, this. I was wondering whether it might have plugged, but he's got a face full of sand. And again, it's just trickling, trickling. That slope's severe. <laughs> it is indeed, Gary. And look at it, it's just gathering a bit more pace and forever getting further away, but I think... Yeah, I just see that replay, just caught it a bit too heavy. Not an easy bunker shot, got to be really cute with that. Yeah, you have, because the last thing you wanted to do is to go 15 feet beyond the pin and have a downhill putt, so... This so, is a great chance. Yeah, to win it, to win it. And just show it is for Mark, but the pressure's on. We'll probably have that one to win in a moment, unless McCarroll can produce a late, late miracle here. Last chance now for him. Moment of truth. Up the hill, we know how slow it is. He's seen this putt. Oh, oh, oh. my goodness. My goodness, cellophane bridge. And that is probably going to be that. Well, he certainly gave it a try. I think he thought it had a chance. Oh, look at that reaction. Oh, he can't believe that didn't turn right at the end. But look at this little tap in for Mark. Mark Young is the fourth first time winner in five Euro Pro events this season. He looked to have come up short, but horror finishes for both of the final group gave him a chance. And he's taken it to win the Jesse May World Snooker Championship at Clevedon. Yeah, top performance there, Michael, from Mark Young. Commiserations to Brendan, but uh, worthy winner. I had to get off to a fast start. We talked about that last night. Um, I did, fortunately. It's nice to play with the local lad, Ashley, um, and his followers. That was good. Um, but I didn't expect that coming up 18. I, I was three back, so I never expected a playoff. So that was a bonus. Didn't play my best this week, so the fact I'm still 
finishing second, losing in the playoff, not playing my best golf, it's it's really a good incentive. I'm starting to learn to scramble a lot better, so that's definitely a positive. Yeah, I thought I was leading by one after my birdie on 16. Um, so disappointing to bogey 17, but delighted to get the job done. Young started the week 10th on the order of merit, but ends it on top, replacing last week's winner, Chris Gain, who tied for 28th here. The top five coming into this event all move down a place, while Brendan McCarroll's runner-up finish sends him soaring to seventh. And just a little bit about Mark Young, our winner, a worthy yeah. winner today. And what an incredible story. Great Didn't turn story. pro until his early 30s. He's 36 now, gets his first Euro Pro Tour win. What do you make of that career? It's a fairy tale story. I mean, ex-footballer, change of heart in direction with his sport and everything, decides to take up golf. And here he is, three and a half years into his, you know, pro career. He's, he's played the Open at St Andrews. He's won here now on the Euro Pro Tour. You know, we're going to see a lot more wins from Mark, I'd imagine. Lovely lad as well, you know, like quite shy. You can see in his interview, quite shy out there. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's a nice lad. And I think we're going to see a lot more wins. Well, it really has been mm. a wonderful week. John Morgan, Cheers, the wizard of the West Country, the perfect host. And what a tournament we had here. Well played, Mark Young. Now